So today's video is going to be considered more of a bonus video since it was something that I had wanted to do early in the month and I wasn't able to find the second film. So I finally did locate it and that's what we're going to be talking about today and that is the 2000 version of Satan's School for Girls. It does star Shannon Doherty. You also have Julie Binns and Kate Jackson making a, a cameo or a special appearance. So the film is definitely a lot more cheesy than the original. It has really bad CGI special effects. And so are, there are these ravens or these crow-like creatures that happen to follow Kate around. And it's implied that they're around even if you don't see them because you hear these uh, annoying high-pitched violin shrieks and this does happen throughout the film so it does get old very quickly um, but the film does open with Kate's sister fleeing the school she's being chased by a goth girl and she just quickly runs into a taxi and the next scene is just a cut scene showing that she's flying from Boston to Washington so she is on her way to visit her sister the only difference here is rather than driving and being panicked and pursued by some dark figure. She's actually just flying and the figure doesn't appear until she's already in the home. And it is, the death is made once again to look like a suicide, except rather than hanging, it looks more like a double slit wrist. So quite predictably, Kate decides to go to the school and investigate and find out what did happen. And she assumes an identity. Obviously her real name is Beth, but she manages to obtain some false IDs by way of her friend Ruben and I don't know for certain if he is her boyfriend or if they're just friends but he does pop up quite a bit before she finally does go to the school. Once arriving at the school she for some reason is corralled into signing some sort of a petition and someone drops a card onto the clipboard that she's signing which says join us the five and we later discover that the five are supposedly a I guess you would say somewhat of a historic society of witches which go on and become very successful in life as well as in school. The misdirection here is that the, I guess the filmmakers wanted the audience to believe that the goth girls are the five. Quite stereotypically you're going to go after the, the underdog type character which is unfortunate but we do realize they are not the, uh, the bad guys and uh, they do pop up a quite a bit. Uh, actually just three times but they really don't fully go away until the lead girl from that group Lisa is killed and that one also does look like a suicide so this film does have three suicides or fake suicides same as the original film Julie Binns plays Alicia uh, Kate's roommate in the film you might better recognize her as Darla from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She was also in Jawbreaker. She was Marcy Fox, more recently as Dexter's wife, Rita. She's definitely come a long way. She still is a very much a very great actress, but these were her younger years, so she still has a, a bit of baby fat on her. Early on in the film, there's a guy, Mark, who seems to be interested in Kate. He works at the uh, records and admissions department of the school. It, even though it's an all-women's college, for some reason he happens to work there part-time, which to me does not make sense, but he seems to be quite interested in her, and we eventually do realize that, yes, she does have psychic abilities, she can read cards, and as her abilities strengthen, she's actually able to turn on lights, but she doesn't quite have control over that, so she does cause them to explode. So he is around for the majority of this, but obviously, his, uh, his reasons for sticking around are quite a cult. He's working with the Five and he's trying to encourage her to strengthen her powers. Uh, that way when she does join the group they will be more powerful. So he eventually is sort of singled out by the Five and they pretty much just kill him because he's messed up quite a bit of times plus he's developed this interest in Kate which he obviously can't because he will ruin things. So it isn't long before we do realize that Kate's roommate, Alicia, as well as a, a couple of other girls which hang around her actually were the five. It wasn't the goth girls. So it isn't long before we realize that the five are actually Kate's closer friends. It's Alicia and a couple of other girls that hang out in their circle of friends. And eventually she does sort of, uh, well, this is actually uh, realized when she wanders into the abandoned student union and she's sort of pulled into a, uh, a pinnacle. 
and uh, they're encouraging her to join the group. She refuses, and in order to be able to, uh, to free herself or escape, she does cause an electric chandelier to fall partially, and she sets the girls on fire. Kate Jackson, who plays the dean in the school, isn't the devil as some people would believe. She's actually just sort of more of a guide. The devil or Satan character in the film is always viewed from a back shot, so you never see the person's face, although it is in the form of a woman. And for some reason, the girls in the film do have an ability to shapeshift into wolves, birds, things like that. So I thought it was quite curious that when the chandelier did fall, they were, you know, being attacked, being set on fire, that none of them thought to flee. They just froze. So they pretty much wound up becoming toasty critters. Kate Jackson, who happens to be a, a stronger witch, tries to subdue Shannon Doherty's character, but is ultimately defeated by a bolt of lightning, which cascades through a stained glass window. In our ending sequence, it is implied that everything is okay. She's gone back home. She's made her life. She's obviously married to Reuben, and they have a daughter. And I don't know, to me, it just seems kind of funny because I had assumed she was with Reuben to begin with, but she goes off and starts this thing with this guy, Mark. So talk about a slut. <laughs> But anyway, she winds up having a daughter, and our ending shot is we see a group of uh, ravens collecting in the backyard. So obviously they are after the infant, and it won't obviously won't be long before uh, Kate is murdered in order to single out the child. The film does feature quite a bit of flashbacks, which the original never did. It does attempt to provide somewhat of a backstory. And in my assumption, I think the two girls may have been fraternal twins. They seem to be roughly about the same age, but that really isn't known. All in all, it was a fairly well-acted film. Some of the dialogue was cheesy, but the, uh, the actresses carry themselves very well with the material they had to work with. Very well produced. Obviously, Aaron Spelling produced this remake of his original film, Satan School for Girls. That is pretty much all I have for you today. I will talk to you later.